When I first became involved, Larry and Andy were a little frustrated because their dream was to work with this guy that had done Fist of Legend. And through contacts in Hong Kong, we tracked the guy down, turned out to be Wu Ping. Wu Ping rocks. He's uh, one of the best. We love his movies. <clears throat> We've been watching them for years. I think it's a good for Lawrence. Whoosh, whoosh. He said, I really don't know how they got my number and about me. All that he knew is he was, in Hong, he was in Beijing making a movie and got a call from Hong Kong saying that the two brothers were really interested in talking to him. He said, I'm very busy, I don't have the time. And then the call came again. He read the script and he thought that script was a very brilliant script. So he decided that he should do it. One of the incredible experiences on this movie, and uh, unlike any other movie I've done, is that uh, our four leads spent uh, three or four months training with Wu Ping and his uh, Hong Kong stunt team. The, you know, these aren't athletes, they're actors. You know, when you want someone to paint your house, you hire a painter, not an actor who makes believe he's a painter. And they really had to learn a fighting style that they never had learned before. It was a tremendous hardship, but it is evident on the film when you see it that that's Lawrence and that's Carrie Ann and that is Keanu in those scenes doing that stuff, and it's, it's astounding. We started training in October of 97. Trained all the way through till March of 98. That was on like an everyday basis. One, two, three. It was a very involving, exhausting uh, process, which I, I initially thought we were going to be um, doing Kung Fu for maybe four or five weeks, something like that. And it ended up being months and months of training. The, the interesting thing is in the, the challenge. And the challenge is how we can make these people look as though they know they are born with the skills. We all sort of have our own person that is sort of our teacher. And my teacher's name is Ma Dai. He really held my hand in the beginning and was very hard on me at the same time. Chu is Keanu's main guy, and Chu doesn't speak any English. Then we have Dion, who oversees all of us, and he speaks better English than the rest of the guys. And he sort of our go-between Wu Ping and, and us. We've, we've had uh, various movie kung fu dojos in Los Angeles and in Australia, and at lunch we'd sit there with our legs, you know, trying to open the rusty gates and stretch and watch kung fu movies and see what was good and bad. And I really didn't know if I would be able to do what they were asking me to do. I was going every day and getting on the wires and and being lifted up just to get the feeling of being lifted up on the wire and then, you know, practicing sort of getting up the wall and then having the wall padded and then going along the padded wall and then them taking the pad off and me being terrified. Like, we could, I couldn't do the wire that day, the day they took the pads off the wall because I was so afraid. He's very inventive and organic, the way he works, and, and uh, you know, you must have your own style, but you also have to have, you know, and, uh, you know, good kung fu. <laughs> Initially, I think Wu Ping and the, and the Y team, they took us on and, and thought we were useless, which we were, hopeless at Kung Fu. And, uh, but they slowly realized after a couple of weeks that maybe we were going to be able to get to a level where we'd be halfway decent. <laughs> really intense but it was a lot of fun and again it's you know it's the kind of thing that you very rarely get an opportunity to do something like this I mean I feel incredibly blessed to have uh, 
worked with Wu Peng and his team. Okay, so what do you need? Guns. Lots of guns. Everybody pass out to everybody a rubber handgun. Just so when I go over the nomenclature and what the weapons parts are, you guys understand what they are, you can physically have something. And these are 100% safe. Turn! Kill! Everybody pick up your weapon and hold it with two hands and put it out in front of you. Almost everybody has a great position. He tried to... You know, not do guns the way they're always done. Just a couple rounds. Now the guns are supposed to be at each other's. What are we doing? Directors! Yes! <laughs> okay. I tried to make it kind of funny. Would you please remove any metallic items you're carrying? Keys, loose change. Sets on the picture all originated from the visual design of the film that Larry and Andy achieved in, in storyboarding the film. They were executed by and, and built and designed by Owen Patterson, who's our production designer. Now, this film is sort of full of many, many details. An art department is trying to create an environment which is really just an illusion. This is my ship, the Nebuchadnezzar. This is the main deck. The Bremer! And we're trying to use like contemporary technology in a sort of slightly retro fashion. It's something that looks a little bit different to your archetype sort of spaceship. We've sort of fallen back a great deal onto uh, and utilised this. Larry and Andy wanted us to do uh, a lot of Jeff Darrow's drawings, which were the original conceptual thing. But we're trying to sort of promote that idea of a reality that isn't real. You'll look at it and go, oh, it's a real place, but it's, there are these illusions sort of within it. I think there's some of the most beautiful and spectacular stunt stuff we, I've ever been involved with. There's style and visual effects in these action sequences that has not ever been seen before. Bullet time, registered trademark. Enter the Gata. The Gata Force. Let's get the wind cue right. Yeah. No one's around. Politically around. Uh, he's around. <laughs> You might want to spin around and face the subject at hand. In this particular rig, there are 120 cameras and two motion picture cameras set up. A bullet time is something that was conceived for the Matrix specifically, uh, but I think it's the byproduct of the directors observing technology and then they ask the right question at the right time. That's the that's the money cam at the end, that last one where the bullet is basically gonna come over your head. I could shoot the same exact stunt several times over. I can also do things like I can go forwards in time, but then I could also choose to stop the camera abruptly, start moving backwards against itself while the action continues to move forward. I can create a three-dimensional construction of the object. Everything begins with a simulation and uh, all the math for how to shoot it works backwards from there. These guys have a lot of specific notions about the worlds that they're, they're creating. And they're, they're pretty over the top in terms of what they want. You're allowed to do things, break the rules that you wouldn't normally do. We're, we're changing speeds left, right and centre. We're going to slow motion to high speed, jump cutting, crossing the line. Everything's going in there. To achieve 
what seems like a fairly simple thing to do, to fly a helicopter down the front of a building, shoot a window out and rescue someone by jumping out the window. It seems, as we'll see it in the film, a seamless object. It's, it, but in fact, it's been shot in two different buildings. It's been shot on a big set. figure out how to make that scene work. We wanted the glass to explode in sort of an ever-expanding circle and to actually figure out how to make the glass do that, what glass to use, it probably took three months of heavy-duty research. experience for a group of actors in film, maybe in theater, but in film to have been working together, we'll almost have been working together for a year by the end of this. So it's been, a, it's, it's great kind of melding of, of heart and soul and spirit and action. And working in a film of this magnitude has been an enormous eye-opener for me. It's kind of chased away a few demons for me and, and um, it's educated me a little bit more. And, and just working on a film with this sort of budget and on this sort of scale has been a great experience. And I really think that this is the first film of the next century, the next of the millennia, the year Y2K, or they're calling it. It is monumental. I think it is, it, it's groundbreaking. I think it's something people have never seen before and it's going to take people's breath away. And I think that, you know, there are going to be a lot of films that are going to kind of be disciples of this movie. And I think Andy and Larry are going to start a new visual style that, you know, will be very, you know, well known and well remembered.